one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mayor Adrian Sandoval here. Mayor Pro Tem Larry Clark. Here. Mike Cowper. Here. Nick Ralston. Here. Spencer Bradman. Here. Troy Blum. Here. Jeremiah Overman. Here. All right. Can I make a motion to approve the agenda, please? Move to approve the agenda. Second. All in favor? All right. Opposed? All right. Moving on to audience participation. We have Tammy Norgren who would like to speak. So I just wanted to come down. Um, we understand that you're doing a, a proclamation tonight on behalf of the beef industry. <coughs> so, <laughs> so I work for the Colorado Beef Council and represent the marketing arm of the ranchers in Colorado. And apart from that, I'm a fourth generation rancher in Weld County, obviously raising the next. And um, my family, both sides of my family, have ranched around uh, not only Weld County, but the Platteville area. My grandparents on the Norgren side were right here west of town. My grandparents on the Frank, Frank side just east of town. While we have never lived in Platteville, with the exception of a couple of years before this one was born, um, we have always been here ranching. And so we appreciate the support that the town is giving the ranching community, the beef industry in Colorado, and your proclamation tonight. So thank you. Thank you. I already messed up your name. It's Tammy Arnold. That's I'm okay. <laughs> it depends on who I'm talking to. Sometimes I still say in order. <laughs> All right. So moving on with audience participation, we have that proclamation, the Wolf County Ranching Livestock and Meat End Day Proclamation. And it is proclaiming March 20th, 2021 as the Meat End Day supporting ranching and livestock in Fabulous. All right. Moving on, we have an approval of the consent agenda, which includes minutes of the February 16th, 2020, uh, 2021 regular meeting of Board of Trustees, the cancellation of the regular meeting of March 16th, the regular meeting of the Board of Trustees, and scheduling a special meeting on March 23rd in its place. Move to approve the consent agenda as presented. Okay. Have a motion to <coughs> second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? All right. Moving on to action items. The first one is a public hearing concerning a petition for annexation of property commonly known as 8677 Highway 66 to the town of Platteville, Colorado, for the purpose of determining and finding whether Proposed annexation meets the applicable requirements of the Colorado Constitution, Article 2, Section 30, and CRS 31-12-101. So at this time, I will open, I will recess the board, regular board of trustees meeting at 7.08 and open the public hearing. Ms. Rankin. Thank you, Ms. Smith. Uh, part of this meeting, this is presented to the Planning Commission for recognition and approval, which they did so. Also tonight is with us. With us tonight is Melissa Pitter, the town plan. So I'm going to turn it over to Melissa. Uh, good evening. Mm -hmm. So I want to introduce Damian Perez, who is the applicant this evening. He and Tracy are making um, this request of the board. The uh, planning commission did hear this in the hearing prior to this meeting, as was pointed out, and they did make a favorable recommendation. Um, the property is located about three and a half miles uh, west of town. And as was pointed out, which I neglected to do, there was a, a flagpole that was laid down. We annexed a, a long highway, State Highway 66 about three years ago in anticipation of picking up some property along that corridor. So this property is sort of the first flag on that flagpole. Um, again, three and a half miles west of town. The site currently includes about a 16,000 square foot outbuilding that the, the Prezes are, are establishing a dog boarding facility in, in that location. So as you pointed out also, part of what we're doing is um, approving a resolution that identifies the fact that this property and the application meet the necessary criteria for an annexation in terms of contiguity and location. Um, 
In addition, the property is, the request is for uh, zoning of the property, and it currently is agricultural in the county, and the request is for agricultural funding. So it's our AH zone district. We think this is an appropriate district for that property because animal boarding is one of the uses that's allowed and you need to have a minimum of five acres. And the property is 6.3 acres in size. And in, in looking at and thinking about zoning, the, there's a couple of criteria that need to be met that we've I've identified in the staff report. The first is the proposed zoning is necessary to provide land for a community related use, and um, which this does in terms of an animal boarding facility. And the zoning is consistent with our comprehensive plan and the agricultural holding designation. So again, we're maintaining, sustaining the agricultural um, character of this, of this area. So with that, staff finds that the proposed petition for annexation is in compliance um, with our code and uh, Title 31 is required and detailed in the attached resolution. So there is a resolution and an ordinance. The resolution is to um, affirm that it meets the necessary um, the town annexing to the town certain real property, and then the well, no, that's the ordinance. I'm sorry, I haven't laid out properly. But the the resolution is for the um, meeting the criteria for annexation, and then the ordinance is for the annexation, the zoning, and the annexation agreement. So there's really kind of three parts to that. The annexation agreement is one of the requirements and the presence have had that annexation agreement. We, it follows our template pretty closely with however we are waiving the fees, the application fees, the impact fees, and any land dedication requirements. So that's the only real difference in the annexation agreement um, as it relates to this application. So um, with that, I can answer any questions that you have. Any questions? Um, Madam Mayor, I, I've been aware, made aware right before the meeting that the neighbors to the north of the property are present this evening and was wondering if you have any additional questions or concerns that you'd like to address the board with. Well, I think we talked to the <laughs> and got them all answered. <laughs> okay, I, I just wanted to make sure that. You have every opportunity to uh, uh, ask any questions that you may have. Is there two parts of the property, the little house? I don't know. That, that's that's all that's separated. Yeah, the, the small house, to the property to the west has been separated. It used to be combined for about 11 acres. But so, yes. So, you, so that is, they're not asking for annexation? To my knowledge, no. Okay. Not that it makes a difference. I just didn't know what, how it was to be Okay. Yep, he's answered all our questions. <laughs> That's all I have. Any other questions from the public or the board? Does this annexation go straight down? It's terrible with me. So We've already flagged it. My understanding of the um, <laughs> Just down Highway 66, okay. and so this is adding property to that flagpole annexation. Right, okay. It only yeah. becomes a flagpole now. We're getting some real yeah. land now. Yes. Right. So okay. you get the flag board right now. It's yours. Right. <laughs> you got the West End. <laughs> Any other questions? All right. I will. At this time, we'll close the public hearing at 7:13 and continue on with the Board of Trustees meeting. And I entertain a motion for Resolution 2021-04. I move to approve Resolution 2021-04. A resolution of the Board of Trustees of the Town of Platteville, Colorado, making certain findings of fact regarding the proposed annexation of real property located in, 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 in an unincorporated Well County comprising of 6.327 acres and located at 8677 Highway 66, Platteville, Colorado, 80651, as presented. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Motion carried. All right. Give me one second. 
certain real property located on unincorporated Weld County <coughs> comprising 6.327 acres located at 8677 Highway 66, Platteville, Colorado 80651 and zoning such property as agricultural holding and approving the associated, associated annexation agreement as presented. Second. For a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? That was in concert. That was great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, Mr. Perez, thank you very much. Yes, thank you all. <laughs> so, Tracy, congrats to uh, Yes, Thank congrats. you so much. You Good luck to you. Welcome. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Yes. <laughs> all right. Moving on to the next. We have a public hearing to consider the final development plan, which allows for the construction of a maintenance facility with office space. The property is located or is 4.86 acres in size and platted as lot three. LG Everest at West Farms uh, PD and located on Well County Road 32 and a half east of Well County Road 21. At this time, I'll open the public hearing at 717. Mr. Rankin. Thank you. At this time, also was recently presented to the Planning Commission and I'll turn it over to Melissa to paraphrase. Paraphrase. Paraphrase what the Commission was told. Yeah, good. So um, this property is zoned the LG Everest at West Farms PD. And you might remember last fall, the, uh, that PD amendment was approved by you to allow for gravel mining, sand and gravel mining, and auxiliary operations. So this is one of those auxiliary operations. Um, that property is located on lot three of the LG Everest West Farm subdivision, and which was a 4.8 acre site. And it was part of the, um, it was identified on the PD as a shop and maintenance support facility, which is exactly what's being proposed tonight on this property. So it's a 7,900 square foot shop building with an office area. And, um, the criteria looking at the approval of the final development plan is really compliance with the PD, the underlying PD, which this does comply with. Um, the facility is really being used for um, maintenance of their existing um, vehicles and trucks and so forth. So <coughs> it will be used by staff members. It's not open to the public. So where there's a question earlier about um, traffic and it was identified and it's identified in the application there's maybe five to ten vehicles a day so it's really minimal truck traffic that we'll see out there on um, County Road 32 and a half. So based upon the findings within the staff report we're recommending this favorably. The Planning Commission did hear this earlier and made a favorable recommendation to you with the based on the attached resolution and the two conditions of approval. So we have one that's for really minor modifications. And the second one relates to the cattle guard, which allows mud to be um, knocked off the truck tires prior to going onto the uh, county road. 
So based upon that, um, those are the two conditions. So I can answer any questions that you might have. I just want to acknowledge <coughs> Matt and Lynn, who are still here tonight from the Bank Commission. If you have a question for them, please uh, feel free to ask them. Any questions, comments, concerns? We don't have any more public, so those, those questions are answered. Um, all right, so I'm going to close the public hearing at 7.20 and reconvene the Board of Trustees meeting, and I would entertain a motion for that resolution. I move to approve resolution 2021-05, a resolution of the Board of Trustees of the Town of Platteville approving the final development plan for the West Farm property at the Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right. Moving right along. Thank you, Matt and Appreciate your coming tonight. Yeah. Thank yes. you, everybody. Good seeing everybody again. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Melissa. Thanks, Melissa. You're welcome. Have fun. Thank Have you. a good evening. Yeah. All, right. All right, now we'll be moving on to the new uh, resolution 2021 06. Uh, resolution of the Board of Trustees of Town of Plaza to apply and contract for beneficial use of water on behalf of the Town of Plaza and prescribing the terms for application for allocation of the right to use Colorado Big Thompson Project water to the town by the Northern Colorado Water Conservancy District. Mr. Aiken. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just to summarize, when the town purchases CBT shares or a develop, developer dedicates such shares, it is uh, goes through the process of going through more than water to be put into our water portfolio. We currently have 865 shares of CBT, and the process with the TEPs is that once it's dedicated, the TEP process for in order to do the, the, the paperwork and make sure the water rights are there and all the details of that. So a small period of time goes by, then it comes back as Basically, you're converting it from a timber use to a permanent use. So we will have this as long as uh, or until infinity, basically, uh, unless something weird comes up, which it never has in my time. But that's kind of a simplified process. You have the affidavit in front of you, or the uh, the application for normal water, the letter from Lynn Kramer that she or Lynn, sorry, Lynn Rath, Cherry Rasmussen that she sends to me. These four shares come from the three shares that were brought in by 7-Eleven that bring in three more shares of water. And then the property that the town used to own on bridge and a half that we sold, that we originally took it for you, then you played home and bought it, that share. So those four shares was coming in at this time into our permanent use for our water portfolio. So that's what this is for. Any other questions, comments, concerns? I would entertain a motion, please. Question. Sure. <coughs> the four shares that we recently arranged to purchase mm -hmm. are separate yeah. from the ones you just described. Exactly. That'll be the next item on the agenda. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, comments? Okay. Entertain a motion. I move to. Go ahead. I move to approve resolution 2021-06. A resolution of the Board of Trustees of the Town of Platteville to apply and contract for beneficial use of water on behalf of the Town of Platteville and prescribe in terms for application for an allocation of the right to use Colorado Bay Thompson Project water to the town by the Northern Colorado Water Conservatory to Conservancy District as presented and authorize the mayor to execute the associated documents. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? All right. Okay, moving on to the number the temporary use permit in Northern Colorado Water Conservancy District. Mr. Ankin. It's, it's kind of backwards on because you go through the temporary use process first followed by the the final conversion. But these are separate units of water. I'm gonna correct myself with these four temporary uh, units of water, we will have eight sixty-five. Uh, this is from the four uh, acre footer CBT water that you just recently purchased. Uh, this is starting the process. Typically, David, as a public works director, will complete this paperwork 
on his own and have the mayor sign it and start the temporary use process. And then the final conversion that you just approved comes to the board. I wanted to put this in front of you tonight so you're fully aware of how this process works. We'll go ahead and ask you to approve this temporary use process. You know, typically David will do this uh, with my knowledge and my approval. But uh, I thought after all these years, you might as well know that we go through two steps to bring our water in. Actually three, we buy it or it's dedicated. Then temporary use, then final conversion. That's what this is for tonight. So can you please clarify the total amount of shares? 865 total, I correct myself. 865. After these ones are put Once these are done, because I have an email from Sherry that I think I put, did Mary, did I send it to you, put through the packet for the board? Something on this one says I'm about 861. 861, there's and then with these four, 865. Correct, I, I, I stand correct. 861 with the permanent ones of you, because those are already counted on our portfolio. These four will be 865. How many households? Residential, Mary helped me out here around 900 maybe? Close, close to 900. Close to 900. Mm -hmm. But we're a lot closer than we were years ago. Because our household went up a little bit, went up 55 when Roger Farm came in at third base. But when I started, we had closer to 800 shares. So we're getting a little closer as, as we go. And you know, residential or residentially, that's one for one for the most part. Not always, because you have some multifamily, you have your apartments. Commercial-wise, it's different. For example, Seven Eleven, they had two shares with the property because they bought two properties and combined it. The old Will County Auto and the building right next to it. So we gave them two credits because it was already there. But based upon the water meter and the size of cap they needed, they needed three more shares because they needed five total. That's why they bought three more shares, because they need five total. And that five shares alone of this 861 is just for 7-Eleven. So if you really look at it, but when we did the analysis, <clears throat> internal analysis last year on residential water use, the vast majority, I just picked a dozen homes, will use well under their allotment annually on the quota. So that's why we're typically, since I've been here, we've never come close to going over our quota under our use of water. We've not, not even within 200 acre foot of water, close. Because most people like myself, I'll use myself, on an 80% year, a year of water is about 340,000 gallons of CBT. So an 80% say about 226,000 gallons. Last year I used about 160. So I'm not even close to what I could use I just don't want to spend the money. My and my grass is a pale shade of green, not bright green. So that's just but most places are like that. That's kind of how behind the scenes how we are okay with water. If the time ever comes where everybody decides to use hundred percent, then we'll be in trouble. I just don't see it happening. Or if the quota or the quota gets yeah. so bad. Because of this eight sixty five, just say eight sixty five. Northern Water this next month, Northern the board of Northern Water, they'll have a, a water users meeting that they usually go to. It's called the spring meeting. They also have a fall meeting. And that board will take public comment from municipalities, ranchers, farmers on what the quota should be. You know, it's a request meeting is what I call it. The board takes that consideration. Then the following week, the board of Northern will meet over birth it, and they will set the quota for the year. Typically between 65, 70, and 100 uh, percent. As long as we get, David did the math. As long as we get around 68 percent quota and higher, we're, we're okay based upon our historical use. If the board some for some reason sets a 50 percent quota for the spring or the summer, we'll probably be in trouble. We're going to have to. I want. I will come to the board about severe water restrictions. Mm -hmm. And just so you know, every fall, November, the Northern Water Board automatically sets a quota for 50%. Because the outside irrigation use stops. And you're only using residential or inside use. And nobody really knows that. And then right now, it's at 50% quota until the board meets and then we go back to a summer, spring, early fall quota, which is much higher. Correct me if I'm wrong, though. If we're in drought conditions, that actually would drive the quota up versus down. It has in the past, a large part of that, my, my opinion is based upon our reservoir levels. 
I mean, in years past when we've had some dry years, as long as Forest Tooth, the Carver, and some of these other reservoirs are at capacity, that's what those are built for. And, the, and I really want, David recommend, David can be here tonight because his, his wife's still, he's not going to, but uh, David's going to recommend this upcoming year when the tours come out. If you have not attended or went on one of those one day tours to jump on the bus to go with them, please do so because it's very informative and educational because you'll, you'll tour, tour a horse tooth carter, you'll see where our water is, is actually treated, you'll go to the west side of the slope, the east side of the slope, and you'll go to Granby. Um, so those are very informative because that's where water comes from. And we're on the one in Chatfield. And there's some Chatfield one. There, there's some different ones, but still very informative. Exactly. But the reservoirs are key, and I haven't heard recently what those capacities are. And that's part of what that big meeting is. It's basically, and you're welcome to attend too if it comes out. I haven't heard it yet. Any of you can attend. Anyone of interest can attend. Usually they and I go. The state. Uh, climatologist usually speaks, of course the director, different engineers on projects like the NISP and the Windy Gap and the CBT projects, or CBT is already done, but they're expanding it, uh, or they're trying to, but it's from about 8.30 in the morning to about 1.30 in the afternoon, it's not that hard, and then they feed your free lunch too, so I just don't want to learn how to do this right here. Snowpack plays a big part. Snowpack is huge because it's spring right off. And if we don't get a wet March, this week we're not going to. That's going to vastly impact that. So all those are calculated in that answer that Spencer yeah, no, I appreciate the very sure. informative. Sure. You know water pretty well. Thank you. Any other questions? Just out of curiosity. So we talked about the uh, West Farm mm -hmm. mining. When they get done, there's been talk about making those reservoirs over there. Is there a possibility to reserve that for our town? I think we talked about that. Didn't we say that I'm we not, I think right. we did too, but we yeah, is that something that we can have? We have an agreement with LG Everest that we have the first right to purchase the first quote unquote bucket next to the river. Okay. And I specified I want next to the river because during Free River, you don't have to pump it up the bluff to wherever the next pond may be. Mm -hmm. I just don't know. I can't control where they're, they're going to mine first. Okay. But we do have that ability. And prior to LG officially coming into town and purchasing the property, well, they already bought it before they came to the board process. Melissa and I toured the 1,800-acre 1800, 1800 site in Fort Lumpton that they had next to the river. And that was a fantastic tour because they had multiple buckets. They had finished buckets next to the river that the city of Aurora bought that held 3,000 acres. That's what I was trying to avoid in some of these 3,000 acre foot of water and it was full. And then they had buckets that were close to finish that were about halfway through. It's a big operation. And then they had one area where they were just starting to mine it. So you could see pretty much the whole process, you know, the conveyor belts and material and, the, you know, that they're mining. Yeah. Pretty fascinating, actually, when you look at it. But yeah, that, that came to mind. We want to get a bucket, which yeah. helped me in the future. Yeah. When we get the bucket, do we, how do you turn that into water that comes out of your tap? You we give it to sell it to CBT or something, or what do you do? You Sim simplistically, from my understanding, talking to Northern Waters, the day when I met with them, we have the, we have the, the, the hole in the ground of the bucket. Free River comes along, you can literally pump it. And a prime example, the St. Grain on Highway I-25 by Del Camino, when you drove by there a few years ago, there's a pump in the St. Grain River, it's pumping into that bucket next to the, the county office building, that's what they're doing, they're right. the bucket. Yeah. That's something we can do, according to Northern on Free River. And once we have so much water in there, we negotiate with Northern or Central Well to basically trade that for use of treated water. Just like we do now, like the 861 or 865 shares, we have to dedicate that annually to Northern to treat, because we own it, but we have to dedicate it to them so they can then treat it and then we get delivered back to us through Central Well. Okay. It's, yeah. I'm just not sure how they get the water. Well, it's so confusing. It is pretty sure. How you basically get the water, <laughs> it's, it's in the bucket, but it's, it's, it's about water rights. I don't, you know, I don't you know. You know what I mean? Like, if it's just exactly. water sitting there, you can't drink it. You can't 
what you can use on the land. But that's I haven't gone that far yet, Spencer. I don't know if we have to bump it back into the river. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But that's what when we, we do have to put it back. Whatever we use, we have to put back. When we met, it's like saving the cow almost. Right. Build it yeah. up. It's like, and then when we want the water, we replenish the water stream coming out, going down the plat, and they give us. Well, that's it's similar to when you augment your wells. For example, we met, and Adrian remembers this, the board met with Northern Water and Randy Ray, who's got not Northern, but Central Well on the Service District, to basically use your part of our ditch shares in the ditch to augment our wells before the county opened up the use on the wells. And what that essentially comes down to is you have to have a reclamation pond, which that's Northern or Central owns at near on the east side of 85 and 18. So that deal was that we would uh, basically dedicate part of our ditch water to augment our wells to allow us to pump the wells, but, but we had to put water into that pond. And that pond trickles down and that water gets back to the river to the, river, to the ground table. So that's how the water gets back to the river, but in turn then we, uh, we can use that water and we can pump. It's a similar philosophy, but I don't know the details for more. It has to do with making clouds and rain and, and, and <laughs> 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 rain and rain days. Yeah. It seems like it should be more like we have to deliver them the water. You know when they say the deliver, it's the only thing ever delivered is through the pipe at a mass meeting So Okay, any other questions, comments, or things? We still need to do this yet, right? Yes. Correct. Right. motion. Move to approve the Northern Colorado water conservation and service district temporary use permit and associated documents have presented and authorized mayor to that temporary use permit. Second. For a motion Sorry. and a second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? It's better. Like each one's a different note. <laughs> <laughs> We're starting Acapulco. Acapulco. Right. <laughs> All right. Moving on. Okay. Um, to the Silbot Purchase Proposal Final Consideration. Okay. Mr. Rankin. Well, it's not fine. So, since we last met, I, I showed the board a conceptual plan to develop the master comp main complex plan uh, for a facility for roughly 15, 16 acres plus this roughly 5 acres, 4.97 acres. Plus. Since that time, I've had a conversation with a couple of you. Also, I had a long conversation with the Silbot sat on the phone. I informed him that um, recommendation tonight that I would make, I think you would support us to continue this to a meeting in the future, don't specify a date, uh, to work more on the details of what you want and get community input on the property uh, from the rec families, from the seniors and everyone else in between, and before it's a final decision on selling off any part of it. Nick said he understood that. He's very glad it's not being developed other than recreational use, but he still really wants that 40 foot easement. I said that's to be decided in the future. I've made no promises. So, Do you know what that price? I, I, I did a really rough calculation. I think I put in my staff report, but if you, if you break it down, it's like $30,000 like $30, of the 475. Because it's, it's about 116, about 16 and a half. You know, of that property. Um, I did reach out to Brad Cruz with Northern today and, and talked to Melissa about we need to annex it. So Melissa will work on that later this month. Start the we need to have it surveyed by Northern and then develop a plat to bring it into town just like we did with the property, but we're gonna do the whole thing ourselves obviously. It'll be a public hearing process because it's required by by statute. <coughs> and we'll annex that property into the town and I want to tie it, basically attach that five acres to the existing community complex site and do away with that lot line. That way you don't have to worry about setbacks. We build anything over there. Yeah. So that's coming up. I mean, the process will start. So. So we we'll make a motion to table this for future? Yes, please. Okay, I'll make a motion to table this to a future date. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Table. Thank you, guys. Moving on, Reynolds Avenue Underground New Project. Mr. Rankin. This one is both exciting and very disappointing. Um, and, as you well know, I've been working with Excel for about four years now on Main Street for the Underground. 
that just was approved in the last few months. The Palm Park and Davis, like, well, we have a road that paid first on the rentals. We don't have to underground those lines, okay? I'll be very clear to you. I strongly recommend undergrounding the lines. We don't technically have to do the job. But this cost, this estimate surprised me to no end. It is a much bigger scope project than the four blocks on Main Street. We're just doing the four alleys between Grand Avenue and uh, basically past the cracked egg. But this involves a lot more. I put your packet, the schematic basically from Excel. Good luck reading it, but basically this shows all the connections throughout the whole section of Reynolds Avenue from, um, the scope is from River, um, basically where our well is, or that irrigates the ball fields, all the properties, the McCormick's, uh, the Dinah's property, and it goes to Maine, and then it goes up Maine, if you go uh, by our lot on the energy park, across from Slumberjay, or the old tire place, which is, uh, it's not a, a insulation place. There's two poles that go up and then it goes then it goes across to service that building. I included that to get rid of those poles as well. So there's there's no encumbrances on our lot B as well as on Reynolds Avenue. So it's a bigger scope project. As you can see at the end, what uh, Lucas McConnell, regional manager of Excel sent me, it came in around seven hundred one thousand dollars. So I've never gone through this process before, so Lucas and I had a lot of back and forth. It's like, we only have 400,000 in the underground fund. How does this work? But essentially, he said, if you approve this tonight, and the mayor I signed, I'll send it back to Lucas, they'll put it on the schedule, we'll use up our underground fund, and then we'll have to credit our, we'll have to pay them in advance as we go along each year. We, get, we, we accumulate about 60,000 a year, roughly, on the one percent that'll pay this thing. and add, so basically it'll use up whatever funds we have for the next probably five years roughly okay. and then nothing out of pocket nothing out of our, our coffers this year or for this project at all we just won't be able to do mainstream anything else for a while unless we pay for it unless we pay for it outside of our underground fund that's that franchise tax that shows up in the utility bill for next so it's, it's the one percent we get yeah isn't that what they identify it as the franchise tax mm -hmm. It's the only franchise agreement we have with anybody is with Excel Energy. We don't have one with, with Atmos or anyone else. Yeah. Correct. What was the total for the Main Street project? Main Street was, that was affordable. That was three fifty roughly, give or take. Oh. So. That's like, that's more distance. If, too. if we wait five years until we have the money in the account, it's going to cost more money. It's going to cost more money. We're never going to be able to afford right. this project. And those poles are going to be the way you know, we try to move construction around that road and those that poles. Is, I do What is your solution? This is not, this can't be what you're asking us for. You got to have some a trick in your sleeve. Here. I, I don't on. have any tricks. It basically, if we can get Main Street devolved, and, and I'm going to work on that when I get back from vacation, honestly, I'll get a hold of the regional manager cool. again and start that process again. We can get Main Street devolved, and my solution, to be honest with you, I know this is a public hearing, but I'm hoping to get enough money out of CDOT to help cover the cost for this and do the road devolution. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say that to CDOT, but if we can get X amount of money out of CDOT, which is what and it does. Kendra's chuckling. Kendra's chuckling right now. <laughs> quiet, quiet. quiet. <laughs> but the, the two things with, with CDOT, with, with devolution in the past, and, Part of the devolution is that they go in and they do the work and then they give you the street. They don't do that anymore. They will basically negotiate a fair price of what that street would cost for maintenance and long term repair, blah, blah, blah. Because initially they offered us $1.5 million, but our engineer said it was about $3.5 million. So we had a big gap of agreement. And they are going to, but originally when you told us about devolution, yeah, you told us that they were going to pave it one last time and then give it to us with some money. That's not we tried to now. talk, I tried to talk to That's Heather not. about that, Heather Paddock. Because when we last met, Dave and I had a, a, a basically a Zoom meeting with Heather Paddock and Tim Billabrand, who's access control specialist, about, well, if you only want to give us 1.5, then let's do this. Give us that to do Main Street from Grand Avenue to the schools. And then you guys come in and pay 66 South to 28 and Grand Avenue North to the bypass. 
you guys, because it's just really dull and overlay, it's all, all we really need, because there's not much curving good or anything. And I couldn't talk into that. So I tried to think outside the box and see how we get this done. Um, but I do know from talking to her and, and Tim and, and some others at CDOT that devolutions are not very popular with the mm -hmm. higher rankings of CDOT personnel anymore. They're just not. So it's going to be a lot of arm twisting with our state director and the assistant director to get anything done. So I don't see why they're, they want to hang on to that stuff. They don't want to hang on to it. They don't want to give it to us either. They want to give it to you for free and let it be your problem. If you remember the, during the conversation I had with the board, is I also asked for Vasquez, and the engineer came up with about a half million to three quarter million uh, price tag to, to mill only all that stretch. They can offer it with zero. You can have it, but we're not going to give you a dime for it, but take it. And I said, no, I'll take it. That's good for it. I don't like that as your solution. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, we save up money, we pay for our own pocket. For Reynolds? No, for Main Street. I'm recommending it to the board, recommending to the board tonight. We use our funds to do Reynolds Avenue. Are you sure, though? I am sure. Yeah, I am sure. I think so. Yeah. yeah. When you consider that Reynolds Avenue, first of all, is the last unpaved street in town, but more importantly, it goes to all of the ball fields is community center, the senior center. All that development that the town has put in for years. Yeah. And do the street, do it right, do the undergrounding, and make it right and not have to mess with it later. Okay, so use the undergrounding fund for Reynolds Avenue. That's my recommendation. Oh, yes, yes, I because understood that backwards. When the time comes and say we do demolve Main Street, if and when, and we want to do a landscape project. You don't, we don't have to underground anything on Main Street. We don't have to. There's a lot of Main Streets that still have lines to go across. Sure. It's not critical to do that. Do we want to? Yes. But we don't have to. Why is it critical for Reynolds? Tell me on why we have to do it there. Because part of the paving will be around utility poles because of the way that bus will be designed. The, 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 the existing poles now are in a way of wood blowing. Some are and some are, especially along the ball field parking. Those there's two or three poles there that we're going to have to just we can work around because initially when Steve Bathers was designing this a couple of years ago, that's what he was doing is kind of working around those poles. Um, again, it doesn't have to be done. These projects don't have to be done. I am recommending Reynolds Avenue to be done just because it is, like Larry said, it's a, it's going to be a very focal key point to our community for for recreation, for seniors, for the expansion of the Dias property, for other amenities. We go to the gym, we have a lot of traffic down there. Um, I just can't control both projects. I'm just yeah. sorry, I can't. Yeah, it's a, it's, it'd be a showpiece for the stuff. I agree. With the lane of parking and curb and gutter both sides. And, mm -hmm. So on and so forth. Uh, it's like anything else. Do it right the first time. Uh, the uh, old saying that we had in the construction business about we do it nice because we do it twice is funny, but you know, I'm not really practical. I, I may give a different opinion if I knew for sure that we could devolve Main Street in the next year to two years and we'll <laughs> get what we want for it. That might sway me as far as my recommendation, but I don't, I'm not comfortable saying that. I just don't see it happening with their current administration at CEDA. I just don't. And their budget. Yes. Yeah. So, I guess unless there are uh, two needs, wants, or evils, however you want to term it, I think mm -hmm. Rome's Avenue is a priority. That's my recommendation. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I agree with that. So. Then, then we'll be able to start to do this, uh, if we prove this, to get it going this spring, so that way we're on track to uh, start. I told Lucas when he told me about the uh, the way this works is he came out and he emailed me, this is what Main Street's going to cost, like three hundred forty, three hundred fifty thousand. So I asked right away, well, how's Reynolds looking? We don't know. Well, give me another month. I said, hold Main Street. Don't do anything yet. And then I want to see this number, and this is the number he gave me. And I told him, I said, I have to take this to the board. Because it's not our money, but I want you to authorize this. I'm not going to authorize this by myself. That they'll be able to get this going here the next couple months to mm -hmm. get it underground. So that the plans, the plans are done. Okay, gotcha. Not 
not yeah. 20 years. Yeah. No. He, <laughs> this is, this is, what, I, what I recommended. It's uh, Excel. It's right. almost worse. And I think, I think Sturgeon was the company they, they, they're they going to sub with on the Main Street project. So I recommend, and I haven't heard back from it, is I said, well, if you're already scheduling them to do Main Street, why don't you pull them off that and have them do Reynolds Avenue? Yeah. And then we'll go from there. I think he's waiting to see which project we do first. Yeah. So. Any other questions, comments, concerns? The only thing I would say is I don't, I don't agree with this decision. I'm going to vote against it. And uh, Main Street is a potential revenue maker for this town. That facility will not bring in revenue. It's a showpiece, but there's no sales tax going to come out of Reynolds Avenue. And so. I agree with your point. I agree with your point. My, my question would be what what is the undergrounding? How would how is that going to affect its potential of revenue generating to have holes? I've had a plan to do curb and gutter with ball bouts and the parking on Main Street. The re, unless Troy don't need to do that anymore to take the, I mean. <laughs> We're going to have to design it around the existing poles on Main Street along the alleys. And part of that project was if we underground those those four alleys, what Excel was proposing is to put the subconduit in for future street lights and get rid of the Excel street lights and put in like more of the decorative ones and they would help out with that. But again, uh, this project is shovel ready, Rose Avenue. Main Street, I don't disagree. It's a big priority too, but. I think either one would have to choose one. They'd have to choose one. And to me, if they're willing to do a $700,000 project for the $400,000 we have in the bank and not asking us for any more money, I would do this one because it's a higher price project because it's doubled. Okay. And we got a couple years to save up for the Main Street project as we go for the next couple years. Mm -hmm. We're going to be paying. We're going to be in the hole for a few years. They're not going to be, you're misrepresenting what they're doing by saying that. Because you they're, you're saying that they're giving, they're acting like they're granting us the 350000 They're not. We're in the hole 350000 We're in the hole, yeah. They're going to give us a credit at no interest rate and no, no down payment is what they're doing. They're just it's not going to, yeah. It's we alone. can't use this money right. for anything else. He calls it a credit. I understand what he's saying. That's what it was called as a credit. But it's, it's yeah, we're, we're in the mm -hmm. rears. We're in the, in the red until we're back in the black. And you have to pay for it with the uh, franchise tax that to be collected. To be collected, exactly. Interest free. <clears throat> Somebody wants to lend me money interest free, make it a big check. Well, you, okay. you'd mentioned the door for Did something about getting money for this too to that old grant? Not for an old avenue. Not for rent. No, because I, it doesn't qualify. Uh, we were able to get the money for to reduce uh, Circle Boulevard years ago because of the truck route. The senior center was a priority. Uh, but as far as road improvements, you've been talking to Don Sandoval years ago and now Chris Lemay, the new regional manager. Residential streets that don't have that impact don't qualify. I asked about it, I tried, but I even talked to CDOT to see if they had any other off uh, off transit money. Like sometimes they'll give money for off transit bridge improvements off their system, and they don't have anything for road improvements. But I mean, they can't give us money for the devolution. They don't want to give us money for the devolution. Sorry if I misspoke, but that's my intention. Is no, I wasn't. I wasn't trying to. Uh, to get there. It's just, it's not a grant, right? So you have to pay it back. Basically, we're working for free until the money's paid back. <laughs> we can't use that money for anything else, though, can we? What's that? The yeah. undergrounding, the franchise money. We can't so use it here, there. We we, yeah, but it can't be used for anything other than undergrounding. Right. Correct. Correct. It can only be for the and nothing else. But Main Street doesn't have to be devolved to do the underground on Main Street. No, we didn't. If you approve that, you can do it. I'll totally start tomorrow. Either part of it. They're both, they're both under final design and cost estimate. Now it's 
Which one do you want to do? I agree with you on Reynolds. Um, anybody else? Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion. I move to approve. Any other comments, questions, concerns before? So, do you think we're ever going to get any more offered to us the devolution of Main Street? I think we will because there's enough communities that, like when I talked to Chris across in Fort Lupton, you know, they were pretty disappointed in their process. Um, I don't have a crystal ball mind, but, if but the, if I, the, think, I think we can still get it done, but it's going to take a while. If the will isn't there now, <coughs> and the will isn't, it, it, I mean, what's to make us think that it's going to get better instead of worse? And eventually they're just going to say, like they did with Front Street, or what, whatever that desk is, mm -hmm. they're going to say, we ain't give you anything. Other than the property. Other than the property. I, I think and, and if if that's the case, I mean, you, you know it better than I do, but if that's the direction they're going, is it going to just get worse? My answer to that is administrations change over time. Yeah. <coughs> we're, we're see administration see that changing at some point in the time it does. I hope it'll change for the better. That's the only answer I have. In the meantime, when the road's crappy, we just have the citizens call C Doc. Well, that's just it. I mean, so I usually, don't, I don't want to take it on. Right. Another street to deal with. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, if we're serious about it, we're definitely going to get any better. And. We can still do downtown landscaping and timelines all that uh, without only Main Street. We just have to follow for permits that Mr. Philip Brown will probably approve because uh, he's supportive of this. He's flat out said during the meeting with Heather Paddock, he's supportive of this. It's just he just he knows he the funding's not there. We're not being offered. Probably both. So I know she doesn't have money to do all the projects. There's no way. I see the money streams that come in annually from the federal government was allocated to Colorado out of 49 states. And what are, through, even through our upper front range, you know, 2030 plan nowadays, it used to be the 2020 plan. I mean, you've got, it's kind of like dual application. You've got twice to 10 times more money being requested than the money available. So. It just feels to me like if we give this up, uh, we're basically giving up on Main Street. So we don't care about it right now and it's not going to get done. And that's been a focus that I thought we were been working towards for the past few years. So I'm kind of shocked that we're willing to just dive off of that for Reynolds. I mean, I get it, it's a big project, but it's at the corner of town. It's not the center of town. In my opinion, it's not the focus of this town. Main Street can be. It's not right now. It needs to be. In order for the platform to thrive in the future, it should be. Any other questions, comments, concerns? Okay, I'm going to entertain a motion. I move to approve the Reynolds Avenue Underground Project as presented and authorize the mayor to execute necessary agreements as approved by the Legal Council. Second. Have a motion and a second. Can I have a roll call, please, Mayor? Mike Cowper. Aye. Nick Ralston. Aye. Spencer Bradman. Nope. Troy Blum. Aye. Jeremiah Overman. Aye. Larry Clark. All right. Okay, okay. Moving on for agreement for services, the 2021 Crack Seal Project. Mr. Ringham. Thank you, Mayor. And Mr. Brandon submitted <clears throat> a summary of the bids that he received. He's recommending Crasco, who we've worked with for multiple years now. They, they provide the lowest bid per pound of $1.45. Uh, you see the estimated poundage, which varies quite a bit. Same rate companies came at the lowest of 10,000 pounds. Uh, that's hard to believe when all the others are high, you know, mid to high at uh, 20,000 or more for the most part. 
Uh, what David's recommending, talking to Crash, because they have this uh, additional product, and I think my best explain it. So typically, you have your your, your basically your black rubber that you crack so with, you put it into your cracks. What Crasco has is another product that in the wider cracks, <laughs> it will go in more instead of a uh, goes in pretty gooby basically like oil. It has more of a solid texture to it that they're having good luck to put in first on the bigger cracks followed by the normal crack cell on top. Because if you notice over time when you crack cell streets, it starts sinking and it starts developing a dip. Yeah. And this is a product that Crasco's had success with to keep that from happening, to do a longer shelf life on your cracks for your streets. Of course, the key to the crack cell is to keep moisture out of your asphalt so it stops cracking and deteriorating. Uh, this this money uh, there, there, we budgeted a hundred thousand. I had to laugh today. I thought we only had fifty thousand. Probably someone with the budget was. We actually budgeted a hundred thousand. I told him not to expand his project yet. But this is to do all the Rogers Farm and old homestead subdivisions because uh, part of our project going into the budget is to talk about chip sealing and patching those in 2022. So. Um, one thing we could do is if you give them a little bit more money, there's a few cracks on division that we can take care of as well. Primarily from Reynolds Avenue to Grand Avenue. If you if you walk or drive that, you'll see a handful of cracks starting to develop across the division more. But this 56,900, 56,900 would take care of um, Crasco's bid and it'd be well within budget. The other companies did not offer this additional option of, of this uh, other product that Crasco is going to use on our streets. So, he was pretty impressed with it when, when we talked. I did not talk to Crasco. So the recommendations the Crasco with with the mastic. It's called the mastic. Because right. in the recommended action, it doesn't specify. It just says Crasco LLC, which there's two bids on it for. Yeah, and he didn't know which way you go with the typical crack cell, which is thirty-one thousand nine hundred. If you had the, the mastic, it would be fifty-six thousand nine hundred. Well, no, there's two. There's a Crasco LLC right above that for twenty-nine pounds, twenty-nine hundred, twenty-nine thousand for a oh. dollar forty-five, coming in at forty-two thousand. Sorry. So if you did just the cracks with Crasco, that's what it would be. Just the, the typical old, old-fashioned. Uh, and that's Crasco without the mastic. And then with the mastic, because they won't use as much Crasco, obviously, because part of that will be filled with the mastic. Sorry, I misspoke on that. So there's less poundage being used, but more of the mastic being used. So the recommendation is the Crasco with mastic. With mastic, that's what he highlighted here on his bid. Okay, so just the one we go to. To move the same motion at yes, you want to add mastic into the word, correct? So you don't exceed 56,000. Correct, thank you. Cool. Any questions, comments, concerns? Are they making a motion, please? We move to approve an agreement for services for the 2021 Crack Seal Project with Crasco LLC with mastic subject to review by legal counsel and authorized mayor to execute the same. Second. To not exceed fifty-six thousand nine hundred dollars. Second. I have a motion and a second. Roll call, please, Mary. Nick Ralston. Aye. Fred Blum. Aye. Jeremiah Overman. Aye. Larry Clark. Aye. Michael Cowper. Aye. Spencer Bradman. Aye. All right. Moving on for agreement for services. Uh, Move. Uh, yeah, agreement for services, engineering services, Mr. Anthony. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Mission Mike Port, we uh, received 11 proposals for engineering services from the RPS sent out. Dave and I reviewed all 11, uh, shortlisted it to six based upon the proposals uh, that we felt would best meet the needs of the plateau. Uh, the mayor and Larry assisted Dave and I in, in doing those interviews here recently in the last week. Uh, really what it came down to is we felt, and I'm not going to speak for Larry and Adrian, but uh, I think as a group we felt that uh, Northern Engineering simply had the most overall to offer. They have, I mean the history and the, and the, and the institutional knowledge is one thing, they have so many of our plans and documents, but since Steve Batheris left we want to make sure we're receiving quality services for engineering. 
uh, it wasn't just Steve, it was the firm, Northern Engineering. And Brad Curtis has taken on that role. Uh, part of the interview process we meet, we met basically the president or owner of Northern Engineering, who was part of the process, uh, as well as some of the other proposals we met their owners or their CEOs. Uh, we looked took a hard look at JV Engineering, which we've contracted with before. Agree with water and wastewater, they do some civil, but we felt Northern had more of a civil experience. We also interviewed with Brad Hagen and Adam Smith of Civil Resources. We currently work with them on, on different projects. <coughs> the, probably the smallest firm that we, we have talked to, they didn't have as, 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 as wide of a spectrum of services. Uh, you know, with water, it would be Brad, with Adam, it would be, you know, and he's great to work with. I love working with him. But they have a very small staff, and I, I think. Uh, Northern had the best ability to provide everything from serving, surveying to geotech, development review, helping us on, you know, Brad was impressed recently on helping to deal with CDOT and Excel Energy. He knows all the CDOT guidelines for road and sidewalk and street constructions. Uh, Brad, I, I started, I, I first met him years ago when he was the engineer and public works director for Fort Morgan, when they developed their Main Street about 10 years ago. He's the one that instrumented that on Main Street. Uh, and we talked about a Main Street. I'm really going to go on Main Street. Um, Larry, I don't know if you wanted to add any more comments to that, but I think uh, hands down between PEC, Jerry Engineering, uh, PEC, or uh, there's several other engineers firms that we talked to, but they were the best hands down, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I think we came to that consensus on the committee. I agree. Absolutely. Yeah, I was quite comfortable with that conclusion. Yep. It was, uh, Pretty interesting listening to a variety of <coughs> companies and a variety of presentations yes. that they had. Uh, but I'm quite comfortable with this recommendation for uh, engineering services to go to Northern Engineering. They, they really stood out among all of the candidates as the ones that were most capable of addressing the needs of the town. Mm -hmm. Or majority of the needs too. Yeah, and we also looked at their pricing because they were required to uh, submit their pricing for the different levels of services, and Northern was pretty competitive right in the middle with all of them as well. Any any of the firms could have done the job. Yeah, I don't disagree. Hands down, any of the firms could do the job. Uh, they almost came down to when David and I was talking prior to the interviews. You know, his philosophy going into it is that if it works, don't fix it. And that's kind of where he ended up being. It's like, you know what, nobody told me they can do better than what Northern's offering. And I, I kind of get, agree with him. Yep. But yeah, you have a rapport. They know you, you know them. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know. But I think it was well worth the time and effort to make sure that we were doing the best due diligence by the town, mm -hmm. by engineering services and the cost and the product, and you know, quite honestly, the deliverables on what we're getting in, in the return for engineering services. So mm -hmm. that's all I have to say. Any other questions, comments, concerns? All right. I am making a motion, please. Move to an agreement for services for engineering service with Northern Engineering, subject to review by legal counsel and authorized mayor to execute the same. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. 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 Or I know I got a picture of you. It's just been static since like the moment it started. It's not a big deal. I've been listening the whole time, but I'm just letting you know I can't see what's going on. But um, anyway, um, and I apologize for not seeing a written report. Um, I was kind of scrambling to get some of the stuff done for this packet, um, some of the resolutions. Uh, but I think we got it all done, so that was good. Uh, and that's really all I've been working on. Other these few things, this annexation and um, the FTP for um, West Farm or Everest. So again, apologize for not getting you a written report in time. No worries. It's nice to have you join us. 
Yeah. yeah, thank you for letting me do this. And uh, the good news is I did actually get vaccinated, so um, hopefully I can come back soon. <laughs> good deal. Good deal. Any questions for Ms. Covery? All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you all. All right, Mr. Rinkin. Thank you, Ms. Mayor. A couple items I want to touch base on in my, on my report earlier today. On the man drivers, I finally got another contact for Occidental. Uh, Coley Neely, she's a consultant or basically a legal advisor for Occidental. Uh, I reached out to Sam Salmon, who I've known for years with, with Anna Dark, but he's still with Occidental. And he put me in connection with, with her. She called me up today to talk about her reforms and the service use agreements. And I kind of brought her up to speed from a couple years ago when I was talking to Ken Bachman, who represents Mr. Sherwood on Sherwood Homes by River Farm. Um, there's more to come, but basically I need to pull down the two SUA service use agreements, read through them. But in 2005, when Platte River Farms was developed and brought in as a subdivision to the town by Mr. Sherwood, and I, I just got here myself, and I had I was on fault with it. Um, Patina Oil and Kirby D had two service rights or, or service agreements on that property. And they're both now controlled by Occidental. Uh, Patina went to Occidental, and then Kirby D, of course, is on the hand of so that's Occidental. Um, we spent about an hour on the phone. We pulled up the assessor's office. We looked at the property. There's one well on that property that's actually not in the platted area of the subdivision. It's just south of the 66 River Bridge. You can see the tank battery by the river. And there's a well just south of that. So that's the one well on the property that's anywhere close to what's actually platted, the 50 acres we're interested in. We have, we have the 27 acres down by the river, which is floodplain. There's wells down there, but that's irrelevant. We can't develop that. So that's a positive. In 2015, there was one well, I remember seeing it, uh, between Rick Furry's property, those, those, that Abbott farm that he bought, and that farmhouse about halfway down, there's a well right in the middle of that field. In 2015, that was plugged and abandoned. Uh, so it's no longer in existence, but she verified when we were talking today that the underground piping is still there. And she said, we bought the property, they would just simply go remove that, so it's out of our way. I still need to read the service use agreement and uh, touch base with her, but it sounds very promising that if we do acquire that property, that we would have some various uses that we could do on the property. Uh, but this is an initial conversation, but I'm optimistic about that. And where I told is, her, where is this property? It's, it's Bella right across the Bella Vista next to the river, south of 66. Oh, okay. That's the Platte River Farm, it's still called Platte River Farm. So, so are they still trying to sell it to us? Ken Bachman is. He's currently in Texas. He told me the last week he was flying out to be in Texas in the last week and all this week. And then uh, he told me to check into the surface use agreement because that's what the holdup was last time. And I explained to Colleen that I was talking to Elizabeth Knowles, who um, she wasn't an attorney, but she was pretty much, they call themselves landmen. And Colleen is kind of a landman and a legal consultant. She called me from Eden. She said she hasn't been in the office for over a year, but she works out of the flat office in Boston. Uh, super nice lady on the phone. Very helpful. So we're going to touch base again after I talk to Mr. Bachman. When I talked to Ken, he said nothing's changed since I last talked to him two years ago. Mr. Sherwood's still going to sell to the town. But at that time, it was uh, a unique agreement where the town would essentially replat it, have it appraised as a buildable subdivision. Not that we want to build that subdivision as platted, but then he would get a tax break if he sells up to us for a lot less money. So that's essentially what that came down to. And I worked with Kenner about that on that a couple years ago, but it just got stalled once Oxy bought out and a dark oak things changed. So that's on the horizon. <coughs> I mentioned the uh, Colorado Tree Coalition grant. I sent some emails out, Spencer. Did you get those that I sent out regarding the PTT committee meeting and stuff? Okay. Yep, we're going to have our meeting next week. Next okay. Tuesday. Okay. You could attend, that would be awesome. Sure. <coughs> uh, I mentioned meeting with Chris Cross. I'm still waiting on some follow from him on the NIST conversation uh, on some shares. They still have it available. Uh, they did sell some in recent years to Dakota and Hudson, but since that time, they were informed by Northern. There's a subcommittee that oversees the NIST project for Northern. 
that demolition itself shares with other communities outside of the project scope. So he's going to talk to his finance person who is monitoring this, these shares for Fort Buffin to verify what that's all about. Uh, the Rice Broadband issue, as of today, I've been working with them. Uh, Mickey is her name that represents Rice Broadband. And I have no excuses. They just haven't been paying us for the last six years. I see lease payments come in annually or every month. And I didn't check on it. There's two lease payments on a water tower. One is for Sprint Nextel and one is for Rice Broadband, which used to be Watt Wire and something else. Now it's actually a I don't know. <laughs> so long story short, we get over a thousand bucks a month from Sprint Next Hill. And it never dawned to me that there was two lease agreements and that uh, over the years, Rice Broadband in 2014 was supposed to be paying us 400 bucks a month. And over the years, we did some amendments to the agreement. They added some antennas and equipment, went to 550, 850, and then the last year plus, it was over a thousand dollars a month. And it wasn't until they reached out to Mary to pass it on to me that they wanted to do another amendment. So I started digging and I realized we've had no money coming from. But I reached contact with Mickey saying, this is what I found out. Help me correct it. I got a hold of Kendra and there's only so much legally I can do or she can do, but I, I just told her, pay up. For the last six years, pay up in full. And she sent me an email today saying their finance director uh, they had to do approval, but allegedly, I'll, I'll believe when I see the check, approved it, and they'll send out a check by the end of the week for 53000 some odd change, which was the cemetery fund, because those leases are supplement the cemetery. And then we'll get her $1,000 a month lease on top of that. So uh, I apologize. I should have caught that years ago, but I never did. But hopefully... Now we have Hawkeye on, right? Which are auditing firm. Yeah. Well, they they water trouble we could bring in, but they'll look at all of our things. Yeah. It, yeah. So, so year over we year, when they order. ask, hmm? when they ask year over year, is why is why are you well, with us anymore? If it's not in our budget and we're not collecting the money, they didn't know to ask. Well, we collected the twenty fifth. One thing is that we collected the twenty fifteen, not the twenty sixteen, and they're fourteen. They probably just assumed. I'm not sure how Audrey's thing, but they probably assumed we just didn't have lease anymore. But they, the funniest thing is Rice Bob, yeah. Rice Broadband has been paying this. The auditors always. really don't. Go ahead, Kendra, sorry. Sorry. No, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but the auditors really don't look at that kind of thing, mm -hmm. unfortunately. So. But so David so. Green, as of today, David Green is going to build a spreadsheet to track those two leases. And, and I'm going to talk to him Thursday when he comes in. We're going to do an internal analysis. So I look at the budget pretty close. Sales tax, our IGAs with both Royal County, the state, my high range of tax fund. This this was just a slip. I just didn't catch it. I knew we were getting lease payments, and I thought it was for Sprint and Rise, but realized it was just for Sprint. So. Uh, well, it's a happy mistake. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you you're talking about that. Thank you. Help build build that new project soon. And the nicest part about this is this holds true, and I think Rice Broadband will stay for a while because they want to add some more equipment on there. Um, we talked during the budget how the cemetery wasn't holding its own. Mm -hmm. This will make it hold its own because we we're about 10,000 short annually mm -hmm. on operation versus. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> That's fantastic. Hey, my glass is half full, Spencer. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> So I know if we hadn't paid them right then, we'd be cutting off our walk car. <laughs> yeah. So if they send an email saying they're going to pay it, then they kind of need to pay it. So, you know, they, she said that they're supposed to send out a check plus the monthly payments yeah. that we should receive next week. So I, I, I let my staff know. I told David Green I copied Kendra on it because she's part of this conversation. Yeah. And I think, Kendra, if they don't, we can probably go after them for, what, three years? Well, now since they sent that email. Yes, yeah, at least three years, maybe a little bit more, but yes. Okay. We can certainly go after them for the three. And what I did is I made sure there's basically 12 pages of emails back and forth between me and Mickey, it's her name. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, for being a police chief, I call it confession. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because since 2014, <laughs> they've been making the payments to a vendor in Fort Collins that was under our 
IP or whatever address, and they didn't catch it themselves either. So they've made fifty thousand dollars in payments oh. just to the wrong company. See, I wouldn't want to be on yeah. that end of the mistake. Yeah. And, I, and at first, at first, I get impression. <laughs> A couple of weeks ago, I first got the impression from an email response back from Mickey, the way she worded that, she was asking me to go contact and get her money back. And I'm not doing that. I'm uh, not. That's your no, mistake, that, not mine. Right. So, exactly. But uh, it is a huge oops on my part because I didn't catch it, but I'm hoping in the next week we'll get a big check and then we'll get our monthly lease payments. So. Uh, the business sidewalk project, I'll be reaching out to the two partners very soon. Um, her name is Jacqueline from CDOT. I don't remember her last name, but she's redoing the plans that Brad Curtis submitted to complete that sidewalk project. She emailed me today about some follow up. Um, I have to do a basically an environmental review, which is not going to be anything because it's already in, in an established uh, area. We don't have to do the Sioux, which is a new underground utility locate project you know, that we have to do uh, because of the depth. It's a, you know, it's a, it's a five foot attached curb sidewalk that we've done. But there's two properties that I mentioned the board before right over here is Dorothy Grove Markles and the property in the corner. Um, that, according to the Will County Assessor's Office, we don't have right away. But Steve Lund, the, the, the surveyor for Northern, did some research and found a prescriptive easement, essentially is what I call it, from 1874 from Well County when the town was being developed, and that used to be a county road. We still want to, I still want to meet with him to get a dedicated easement from both property owners. We want to be good neighbors. But technically, we could go in under the, the information we found and see how we approve that. I'm not going to do that to anybody. I'm going to go talk to Dorothy and to the husband and wife that live over there and do the right thing. So with that, I don't know when that'll happen, but the plan should be reviewed at least by the end of the month. Got, got a little delay. And then we'll have to bid it out. We have to follow all the CDOT specs. We have to bid it out for CDOT guidelines. We have to build it for CDOT guidelines. Um, but it'll be a nice enhancement in town. Every morning I see some seniors walking down the division and we still have a sidewalk. Mm -hmm. To walk on instead of right in front of Larry's house and then to the bench in your yard and stop and take a break. Okay. <laughs> sure. The bad thing about beer tent. Mm -hmm. You know, the bad part about it is, you know, when you have a sidewalk, you have to maintain it, you know, snow and stuff. But uh, we build it, and if it cracks and becomes disrepaired, we fix it. Mm -hmm. We being the town. So, not a bad situation. Wow. Other than that, uh, you already know from earlier that the 16th meeting this month is canceled, pushed back to the 23rd. I made that recommendation, so I'm going to read here if I can. Who approves your time off? Hmm? Okay. So who approves it? The mayor has signed it. I do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I've already bought the tickets. And I scrambled. Uh, I, I can't tell you what spring training tickets for Colorado, Colorado Rockies cost this year. You want to go watch them after what they just did? My son does, and I admit I could. I mean, he I admittedly he year. just bumped his head. True. <laughs> True. And I've got a children's hospital invoice to show that. So, but uh, yeah, a little bit of getaway, and uh, the one other thing I want to bring up is I passed on 50 applications and resumes to Mary to Mary today to review for the town clerk treasurer position. I looked at. I thought you were going to leave it off better than that. I gave. All <laughs> <laughs> I gave. I, I did. Decided at the last meeting that wasn't going to be necessary. <laughs> Mary was spent. No. So officially, I received fifty. Was there, by chance, was there any internal applicants? No. Why not? I can't speak to that. Because nobody has the qualification <laughs> or the desire. Or both. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it's easier to teach someone new tricks versus trying to break old habits. Just it's true. It's very true. There, there were, and I'll be upfront, there were eight that I felt were pretty, that met some of the qualifications, if not most qualifications, that I think I definitely want to interview with you. But uh, Mary had a pretty good idea on that, that uh, probably do a first round. 
Uh, I want to ask for be part of that process and ask her to uh, also find another Catholic treasurer to assist along with Adrian. And then Larry and I are, are there probably to be part of the final round of interviews in the process. And that position won't be hired by me. You have to hire the position because it's appointed by the board. You appoint the town attorney, the town manager, the judge, and the town clerk treasurer. So, but we will make a recommendation as a committee in the interview process. That'll probably happen in say me in April or first thing in May. Because I gave Mary two weeks to look at those. So, and it's not easy. <coughs> so, but I'll wrap up with that. Any questions you have? Any questions, comments, Ms. Randy? All right. Uh, the only thing I have to add is that we will be starting with our safety committee. We will have the first meeting March 16th, the night that we canceled our regular board meeting. So hopefully we have some people they're still interested in it after all the couple one next door. And we can start that be more like a neighborhood watch like branch off in a neighborhood watches. So we'll get that going. Um, March sixteenth at seven PM. Is there any other questions or anything before the board? Real quick, man. I almost forgot this. The yesterday CML came out to the annual conference and the snow mass was canceled. Um, they announced yesterday at Westminster they're going to do a special conference September 22nd through the 24th at the Weston in Westminster. And then there'll be a virtual uh, event on the 29th and 30th. So the annual summer June CML is off, but they're scheduling for, it looks to me like an in-house three-day conference at, in Westminster at the end of September, assuming everything goes well with COVID, vaccination, everything. So uh, typically, tell us to the board in case you're interested in attending. So if you are, please let Mary know. But more information is to, to come. We don't have any schedules yet on what's going on. So. I got a couple of when the, uh, the storm drainage um, off of Reynolds there going to the those new ponds. Yes. Um, is that going to be done when they when we work on Reynolds? The, Correct. The, where that building is, and so that's going to be done at that time. Part of the overall scope of Reynolds might be one of the first things we do is we we demo that building. Then that's a uh, East End Earl Rider property that that uh, Mr. Bill's bought, and that's where the drainage well will go to drain the water off that part of Reynolds. Uh, over to the detention ponds we just built. It's going to be open ditch. It'll be open swell. Okay. Um, the other thing is when we paid 32 and a half mm -hmm. last year, um, right there by Nick's house, was that they, they moved that pole out of the way of the corner to make that a wide turn. Uh, and wasn't that going to be like a wider spot, a wide turn in that corner? I thought it was. Yeah, that's what we talked about. I thought. Uh, that's why we had to move that pole. But uh, are they going to come back and widen that lane now? Like I don't. We, that's I don't have that answer. I thought they were. So let me that's check with David tomorrow. Uh, that's what I was wondering. It's, it's not, not a, I mean, if they paved it, then they got the pole out of the way. It's wider than it was, but it's not wide as I thought it'd be. Right. I thought it'd be like a wider turn line there for the trucks to yeah. be able to make that turn. So I did see a mailbox demolished over there. Yeah. Move that, that mailbox over. <laughs> yeah. So I was just curious because I thought, well, it's not done yet. They, you know, because the weather and the mm -hmm. winter happened. So I didn't know if that was going to be, you know, a, you know a, a wider lane. And part of what we, since you brought three, two and a half, and when David and he had me this morning with JD and Wells Construction to talk about the electrical components of the new wastewater plant. But when I attended a couple weeks ago, uh, David was able to be in this room with JD and Wells, I'll step in to be part of the initial, initial part. When they put the new entrance into the wastewater plant on three, two and a half, they're toward basically the east side of the wastewater plant next to that next property. So it's away from Sturple. We talked about that storm drainage, that ditch. Yeah, so what we want to do is, it's not part of this brick project, so it can't be part of the financing, but a separate project is we want to, uh, once we put in the new culvert, and there'll be a tracking device inside our property, so when the trucks leave, the, the sewer or the wastewater plant won't track gravel onto our new road. Then we want to 
added some storm drains piping to get rid of that water during heavy rains, as we talked about. Either either put a culvert in at under 32 and a half to daylight out to the east to the river, that low area in there, or across somehow. But that's all part of being part of the conversation as well. Okay. Because that's I've never seen water come up over that road, but it comes up and we just don't want that deteriorated right. in there. Yeah. The rest of the 18 and a half is fine, from what I've seen. But from, from Sturkle, it starts flowing back east, the way it looks, and we're going to have to have a survey. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit slow there. Mm -hmm. But on the, the next meeting on the 23rd, I will start talking to the board about some of these development projects, but I also want to go more detail with planning commission. I think that should be part of the conversation, too. Okay. I did find out today that the old hog farm I talked about when I was talking to Nicole Lane from Occidental, yes. uh, I mentioned to her that that was another project I want to talk to her about. And when I clicked on it, Mr. Kurt Hill had bought it. He's the owner of January 20th this year. Who's I didn't this? know that. Who's this? Kurt Hill is... This was outside of town company where I wanted right north of Rogers Farm. Okay. He owns the property next to it. I just happened to click on it. And I was talking to Cole Lane and all 67 acres is owned by Kurt Hill as of January 20th, 2021. Nice. I'm gonna call Kurt tomorrow. Is that for sales still up though? I thought it was, but it says he's the owner and it, the deed was done on the 20th of January. Good for him. Good for him. So that's a key area for growth and development yes. for residential. Yep. So. Public record. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I have a letter here from the Plano Veterans Memorial and the work group. Sent a letter to us thanking us for our donation for wreaths across America. I just wanted you all to know. Anything else before the board? All right. Thanks, 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 Th